Hi guys, uh, so in this video we will discuss about how to implement caching and how to use MongoDB along with Redis in Spring Boot application. So the purpose of this video is to get familiarized with the caching annotations in Spring Boot. So before I jump into code example, I will show you the demo how it looks like and how the Redis and MongoDB are working together to give you the optimal performance for your application. So here if you see, I have my MongoDB cloud uh, cluster here and I have order collection. So Hungry Coders is the name of my database. Order is the name of the collection that we will use for this demo. So basically the collection is similar to tables, but inside collections, we will be storing the data in JSON format. So if you see here, so we have one document already present in this collection. So my application is already running and I have already installed Redis here. So here you can see uh, the database is local host and you will be able to see there is no redis document present here so now what i will do i will go to the postman and you will see i have some of the endpoints like get all orders get order by id create order update and delete order right so now let me trigger get all orders and if i go to my application i will just show you timeout value here so this means uh, 60 seconds so what will happen if any document is getting created in our cache or in our redis layer it will able to stay there for maximum 60 seconds so now if I go to get all orders and I will trigger send. So you will able to see. So you will able to see the first request took around two second here, right? 1894 millisecond. And it gave me one response, one product, which is present in our MongoDB. If I go here, so this is the document it gave and it also inserted in the Redis. So if I will refresh here, so you will able to see here orders collection, right? So orders is the cache name. And inside this, it's all serializable data. So you will not able to read with the uh, in a human way, but it's getting stored as soon as we hit our first request. And this document will stay here for 60 seconds. And after 60 seconds, it will be deleted from Redis. So now if I go to same endpoint and if I click on send, you will able to see the response time is only one to nine millisecond. So you can relate the difference, right? So first time the request went to database it gave the response and it also store the data in redis so it took around two seconds but now it only took one to nine millisecond because this time the request didn't went to database it is giving us from the redis cache so now our next step will be like when the new order is getting created right so i want to refresh my cache also so let's say i will create a new product let's say one two three four five six and i will give the date uh, today's date and i will click on send so as soon as I send this one, the database will have new entry. So I will click on refresh here and you will be able to see now we have two documents and you will be able to see the Redis will not have any document because when we did create order, I don't want Redis to have a incomplete data. So I used the annotation cache evict. So if I go to the code here and now whenever any create order is happening, what I am saying is cache evict annotation what it will do it will clear all the entries in the orders cache so that's why we can't see any orders cache here in redis but now let's say if i again go to get all orders so this is our first request right so it will go to the mongodb so if i will click here send it will give us two record right and then if i go to redis and now you will able to see i have the orders collection so now if i go to my code base so you will see here, I also have another API order by ID and the value of cache is order, not orders. So if I go here in the postman, I will pick one ID and I will go to get order by ID and I will paste this and send, right? So the response came first time from database. And if I go to Redis and refresh it, you will be able to see this order ID is now present in the cache. And also, you will see our previous orders collection is not now here because it's already post 60 seconds. So the timeout value is 60 seconds for Redis cache, but you can change it for your use case in any way. So here, if you see order by ID is here and if I will go and trigger for other ID, right? Now, if I trigger for other and if I go to Redis and refresh it, you will be able to see this is the new ID. And if I will quickly trigger it again, so I just want to show you like we will have a two separate order document based on the ID. 
so if you see here both are here but again the after 60 second it will be refreshed so if i will click again same request so it's coming from redis and the time is only 14 millisecond right so now if i go to my code level and we are creating the order we are already doing cache evict on the orders because anyways for new order we don't want to do cache evict because after creating the new order if the request will come for get order by id it will already create a new record in cache but for update order right we want to do cache evict on both the cache and then same we want to do for delete order also so if i will give you a demo for this so if i will go here and i will say get all orders so i will trigger it and then i will trigger this one now if i go to redis you will see we have orders also and we have order also right so now if i will do update order on the same one so i will say update here and now i am giving product id as let's say four five six and i will do update order now cache evict tag will remove both of these so if i will do refresh you will able to see there is no document present because we updated one order id which refresh the orders cache as well as the order document of that particular id also same will happen for delete order so this is how cache works in a real production applications so the main annotations we are using is first one is cacheable so here you can give the value or name of your cache it can be same also it can be different also if you are playing with the same cache name you can also give at the service level also but in most of the scenarios you might need to use at the method level because the cache collection name can be different and for storing by id you can use this key attribute right and then so cache evict is to clear the cache once this operations happen so you can use cache evict on create update delete right or based on your use case yeah so from code level it's not too much code it's like if you have simple controllers right so here i've created simple uh, request mapping and get mapping post mapping uh, put mapping and delete mapping and for each of the method or mapping i have the methods present in service right and in that method i am using the caching annotations and if i go to redis config so again it's like i'm picking the host and port number and i am just uh, doing this connection factory bean and this template so for the serialization so again this is very generic code so it can be used as it is and here you can define these properties in your application.properties file and if i go to order uh, so i am using serializable here and i am giving the collection name which is present in the mongodb right and in the order repo it's again the generic code which is extending mongo repository and this is my application dot property so i'm giving some properties related to redis the, but the main one is the timeout you can set according to your use case and this is my mongodb url which we are using to fetch uh, the data present in the order collection so if you found this video helpful don't forget to like subscribe and hit that bell icon for more programming content